Hello everyone and welcome back to our Royal Family series. We are officially starting season three and it feels so good to be back. There's been a six year time skip since our story in season two ended. I'm thrilled to announce that we've expanded our Royal Universe. We now have another Royal Family and another Royal Kingdom that we'll talk about and dive into. I'm so excited to introduce you to all of them today. So in this episode, we're going to do an intro for all of our kingdoms and their Royal Families. I'll walk you through each family and their current status giving you a taste of what's been happening since we last saw them. If you're new to the series, do not worry. I will link the season one and two recaps below in the video description so you can catch up on all the drama. First things first, we'll take a look at our two main families and kingdoms. These are the ones we'll focus on the most in the series. The stories will flip flop back and forth between these two. And then I'll introduce our other six slash seven families who are more like supporting characters. Each have their own little highlights and stories every so often, or their stories will be incorporated into the main family storyline. And then at the end of this video, I will show you all a world map of the universe that I have created. I'm very excited to show you so you can see all the kingdoms marked and how they fit together. I'll also introduce the brand new kingdom to our lineup. You won't want to miss it. So grab a snack, get comfy, and let's jump into the royal world of The Sims 4 and let's meet the royals. <laughs> We're starting with our two main royal families for the season. First up is Windenburg. We've got Queen Alice May, who is transitioning out of the spotlight of being the main character from the last season. She's living at the main Windenburg Palace with her long-term boyfriend, Caspian. Caspian officially moved in about a year ago and they're thinking about getting engaged soon. So be on the lookout for a big royal engagement and a ginormous royal wedding. Alice May's dad, Prince Jabari, he was the former prince consort so he's living at the Windenburg Royal Summer Palace it's like the perfect size for him I feel and then his son slash Alice May's younger brother Prince Cedric is now officially a famous fashion designer based in San Maishuno he's been working really hard the past several years but he lives in San Maishuno but he does often return to the Windenburg Palace the Summer Palace to live with his dad keep him company be with his family and all of that and just a quick note I am focusing on the direct family members of the throne to keep things more clear and concise otherwise it would be way too confusing for example there's like a bunch of aunts and uncles that live around them but we'll meet the extended family in future episodes we'll see them more and then for more details you can check out the royal family wiki page which i highly recommend taking a look at there's a lot of info and you can see who everyone's related to on there and then also the family tree video that is linked below so next we'll move on to our other main kingdom of guangxi this is where our first big story of the season will unfold so we have Princess Air, or we have Empress Araminta of Guangxi, and then Prince Consort Han, and then their daughters, Crown Princess Sayori, who is going to be the main character of this season, and then we have Princess Rin and Princess Mamie. If you want to see more details on the daughters, you can check out an Instagram post that I will also link below. Um, and I had some information and about the personalities and, and like strengths and weaknesses. But again, Sayori is going to be the main character coming up, so I'm very excited. Her story will see other royals while her story is going on as well so there's like multiple things going on but I'm really excited to jump into that in the next episode next we have Willow Creek this is the start of our supporting kingdom so for Willow Creek we have King Louis he's he's still an adult he's almost an elder but his hair has gone white so we have King Louis his wife Queen Corinne they're living at the main palace with their eldest son this is Crown Prince Cornelius Prince Corn this is Crown Prince Cornelius he is their eldest son Son, and then Cornelius's husband Ellis. They've recently welcomed a new addition to the family. This is Prince Theodore. Ignore the fact that the E's not there. So Prince Theodore, he is an infant. He's so cute. And then we of course have Princess Vivian, who it would be Cornelius's heir. Vivian's growing up fast. She's super sassy. She's a handful for Cornelius, and Theodore is a bundle of joy. So excited for you guys to see them. Next we have Oasis Springs. So big up date for Oasis Springs. They are now called Oasis A Subs. So this new name, it's meant to reflect the environment. I, of course, the world name was Oasis Springs, even though the environment isn't exactly like green and lush. 
Sobs does mean green and lush in a way. So the breakdown of the name is Oasis, of course, fertile, lush area of the desert. And then the A or E is a connector from Persian and Urdu meaning, it means the of or the, and Sabs is an Arabic and Persian word meaning green, conveying the lush environment that I know is a desert, but we're gonna ignore that because it's part of the name. Sabs also means vegetables in Hindi, so. Oasis A Vegetables, here we are. But here we have Queen Nea. She is the ruler of Oasis A Sabs and her daughter and heir, Crown Princess Arya, Arya's husband, Prince Gabriel, and their adopted son, Sahar. Next, we have our former Brindleton Bay Kingdom, which is now known as Tartosa. Brindleton Bay is just an area in Tartosa now. Their royal family's last name has been changed. So their last name is De La Badia. Badia is Catalan for Bay, which reflects, you know, the historic connection of the Bay Area and Brindleton Bay. So we have King Johan, Queen Sadira, and their son, Crown Prince Frederick, who is in a serious relationship with his long-term girlfriend, Jessica. Jessica doesn't live with them though. Jessica still lives with her family in Sulani, but they are also talking about getting engaged soon. So that's another exciting thing to look forward to. And then their youngest daughter, Princess Molly Grace, lives very close by with her fiance. They are engaged. Their wedding's going to be in like the third episode of the season. So I'm very excited for that. But yeah, this is her fiance, Graham Colbright. Her, his father is the former prime minister of Windenburg. Next, we have Sulani. So in Sulani, we have Queen Leilana and Prince Consort Dean, her husband, along with their son and Leilana's heir, Crown Prince Makana, his wife, Kimberly or Kimmy and their children, twins, Prince Pilapo and Prince Sione and their youngest, Princess Wiki. So here is a significant update. Well, first, Makana's twin sister, Samaria, is still a bit estranged from the family. She's closer with her siblings, not as much with her dad. After last season's drama, and then other significant update, since the time skip, Prince Kaleo no longer has his title and he's living as a regular citizen in Sulani. He actually lives here, he's not showing up right now. And he kind of goes back and forth to visit his sister Samaria who he's very close with. So he no longer has his title, he lives as a regular citizen. He lost his place in line for the throne after last season's drama. It was a tough transition and after much thought, Leilana decided to do this after a lot of backlash when people found out about him almost killing someone and the abuse he did and all of this stuff, it all got out. So um, that has happened since the time skip or during the time skip. His parents, his family have actually gotten a lot closer with him. They tried to be with him during this transition and it was honestly a blessing for Kaleo. Like I think he considers it a blessing. It really helped him get acquainted with things and kind of learn to discover himself. So we'll talk about that more in future episodes. We'll get into more detail about that. So next we have the UKSD or the United Kingdom of Salvadorada and Dockeri. So this is a big family. We have King Adric and his wife, Queen Desta. His sister, Adric's sister, is an adult or young adult. She lives with them occasionally. She kind of visits a lot also because their brother Elon lives nearby, um, but she's kind of on her own right now. And then we have Destin, Adric's son, which is Adric's heir, Prince Osiris and Osiris's four sisters. So when we left off in season two, they had Princess MM, who's the second eldest, and then Princess Safan, which is the third eldest. And then in the time skip, they had twins. This is Princess Sola and Princess Fayola, and they are a handful. So this family will be very interesting. I'm excited to see what drama happens because of this, but yeah, Osiris has four younger sisters. And then really quick, we have a royal family of Qingxing. This is where Prince Consort Han of Guangxi, this is where he's from. Um, it was originally, I used a mod, uh, Asian Adventures mod by Nando that changed Forgotten Hollow into like a Chinese world. Um, I think the mod is broken right now, but that's okay because Qingxing has Tomorong in it too. The palace is there, it's just not showing up. We'll see it in episodes. We've seen it in former episodes. So this is Emperor Li Wei. A lot of people are like, is he not dead yet? <laughs> because he was an elder before the next, the last season ended, but no, he's not. He, he's, he's an elder. He's probably only like 70s, but he has a son, Prince Akio, which is the crown prince. Akio's wife, 
Princess Izumi and their son, eldest Prince Kaito and Prince Yuzuru. So they're kind of like a sub kingdom. They're not really part of the Alliance or the main kingdom, but we will see them a lot in Zayori's story. And now to present to you our new kingdom, so excited. So this is the kingdom of Anamorada. This kingdom has an electoral monarchy with eight year terms. I had a lot of people ask if I was going to have this world be part of Brindleton Bay, formerly Brindleton Bay, now Tartosa. No, I wanted to avoid that because of implications of colonialism. However, I will show you the map. You will see where they get their Spanish and Mediterranean inspirations from is because of where they're located on the map. This kingdom is inspired by Mayan and Aztec cultures. So now for you all to meet our new royal family. So the ruler here was recently elected. She's like just starting her term. That does mean we are going to be having this family change every like eight years in the story. Maybe if you guys want, we can have you guys vote for who the family is in the future. So her title is, she's the ruler. Her title is Latwani and her name is Tozi. Latwani is ruler in Nahuatl, which is the language of the Aztecs and their last name is Kanek. And then this is her husband. He's essentially the prince consort. It, I do also, sorry, before I continue, I need to thank Stephanie. Stephanie helped me everything with the research, with the language, with the titles, everything. Thank you, Stephanie. I, I asked you so many questions, so I, I appreciate your help, but this is, yeah, all thanks to Stephanie. So this is the prince consort. This is her husband, Eloy. His title is in a how a how is like lord or an aristocratic title but kitten is mayan and it symbolizes support and light it means sun in mayan so it symbolizes support and light so together support and light and with a how which is the aristocratic title it represents like the queen's supportive noble role which is her husband the prince consort and then this is their oldest son this is gabor his title is a how so Ahau Gabor, he's a teenager. And then this is their youngest daughter, Itzel. So her title is Ix Ahau. Ix means lady, so Ix Ahau would be like princess. Um, and again, yes, her name is Itzel. So this is our newest royal family. I'm excited to bring this into the world, especially with a different system. They have an electoral monarchy, so they will change. Uh, hopefully that doesn't mean we get attached to them before they leave, but maybe we can find a way to incorporate them in the future. And then before I show you all the map of, of Miraverse of the kingdoms, in case anyone was wondering the cultures that each one is inspired by. So I, I, I think I mentioned Windenburg. So a lot of the inspiration comes from the British royal family. Willow Creek is based off of France and Monaco. They're based off of the royal family of Monaco. And then Oasis Springs, it has a lot of Arab and Indian uh, Desi cultures, a lot of inspirations from there. Sulani, Hawaiian, Polynesian. And then Tartosa is uh, Mediterranean, Spanish, Portuguese. And where to next? Guangxi, Chinese, Japanese, Taiwanese. And then Chinching has now, because of Tom Tomorong, they have more Southeast Asian influence. So, so they have Cambodian, Thai, but they do have like in Chinching, in the Northern part of Chinching, we have Korean influences. There's a lot that goes into there. And then for the UKSD, African Royal Family, I based the family a lot off of Nigeria and Ethiopia. So like a lot of West Africa, but it does kind of vary for them as well. I think their palace is based off of the a Sudanese palace. I think that's it. I think I'm, I got everybody for the cultures and then as I just mentioned for the new family, obviously like the world's based off of Mexico, so that's gonna have a lot of influence there. And then Mayan and Aztec influences as well. And now I present to you the Miraverse official map. I'm so excited. If you've been on my streams, you've seen this, like a draft of this in the past. And then before I get any further, I'm going to let you all know you might see a world on here that you're like, wait, you didn't mention this in this video. This is the kingdom of Chinkapin and they are going to be a kingdom we see in the future, like the middle of the season, so you know what to look forward to, so you know what we're working for. Chinkapin is uh, part of the indigenous language for chestnut, so it's going to be Chestnut Ridge, and it's going to have a lot of Native American influences, and they have multiple leaders. So again, we will talk about that in the future. That's something to look forward to. I'm very excited. But as for the other kingdoms, you can see where they are here. So really quickly, as we've discussed, Anamorada is between 
Tartosa, and it's also between Selva Dorada because the world of Selva Dorada has the Mayan Aztec ruins and that kind of influences. I, I did turn it into an African world, but I imagine that that part of it is like the closest part to Enamorada, so that's where we get the Mayan and Aztec influences. And then, of course, the Spanish influences and Mediterranean influences come from Tartosa, which is literally right there. They're all around, and that's where they get it from. No colonialism here. I'll talk about each kingdom real quick, and then you can kind of see the sub-worlds and the cities where they lie and like what kingdoms they're in and all of that stuff. So of course we have Windenburg, Henford on Bagley, or Henford is part of Windenburg. The Windenburg Isle is where the main palace is, that's like where the bluffs are. Um, and then we have Willow Creek and that has Lumiere City. So we visited that in the past. It was also a mod. I don't know if it works now, which is unfortunate, but um, it's like Paris essentially. Brightchester is in between the two of them. So Brightchester is all the way up here and then Granite Falls is down here. And then we have Oasis Spring, San Myshuno. I, I know this isn't like what it's meant to be, but San Myshuno kind of for me is like Dubai. Um, so that's part of Oasis Springs. And then we have Tartosa slash Brindleton Bay. So Brindleton Bay is actually a big chunk of it, I believe, because the world itself is pretty big. Because Brindleton Bay is like kind of more on the Southern side, like a little bit of the colder, cooler area. Tartosa is like more near Oasis Springs where it's warmer and then Delso Valley is part of that as well. And then we have Sulani. We have the three islands of Sulani. We have um, Guangxi. Mount Komorebi, I think, is a big part of this. Obviously, the mountains are more up in the north. And then we have Tomorong, part of Chinching. So Chinching is all of this. This is where, like, Forgotten Hollow, the, the mod part of it was, is up north. And then Tomorong is in the south. It's kind of like islands in a way. And then we have the United Kingdom of Salvadorada. Salvadorada, I think, is a big part of this. I just didn't want to cover the name of the kingdom. And then Dakarai is this area area here. Dakarai is based off of Egypt and it, it's so it's kind of close to Oasis Springs and that's where they get their influences from too. So I hope this map helps but this is the map as of now so you all can see and hopefully this makes sense like where the cultural influences come from all of the kingdoms. So that wraps up our royal introductions. Before we go I, I just want to say so real quick explanation of like why Windenburg and Guangxi are the main two royal families. So Windenburg in season one it was it was it's the OG family it's who I started with so that that's why they're the main family. They were meant to be the main family to begin with. Guangxi is a little bit more new I feel very seen with them. I incorporate a lot of my family's culture into theirs, so that's why they're the other main royal family. I, I wish I could focus and have in-depth stories for all of them, but I hope you guys understand I am one person. There is a lot of kingdoms, and I, I did say in the past I wasn't going to add any more kingdoms, but because now I'm making the other kingdoms supporting kingdoms, I feel like I can. I feel like I won't get overwhelmed in that way. So please don't ask me to do like really in-depth stories for the other kingdoms, uh, because this is my way of making sure I don't get overwhelmed and I still enjoy putting out videos and, and enjoy the series. That being said, I do have a full-time job, so this is a hobby. So my video uploads might vary a bit. I aim for around four videos a month, but it might be more or less depending on my schedule. Also, I'm not a professional writer, just someone with a big imagination and love for storytelling. So I do really appreciate your support and patience as we embark on this season together. I have outlines planned, but I am very open to just playing through and kind of enjoying this journey together. And then I can base story stuff off of that. I think it's more fun that way. So thank you all so much for watching. In the next episode, we will embark our gameplay of the season and I'm very excited. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that like button. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so you can see all the future episodes of season three. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!